of King Charles I. The trial of King Charles I lasted for seven days, from January 20th to the 27th. Charles was in the court for the first three days and the last day. The president of the court was Judge Brent Bradshaw. He wore a metal cap under his hat in fear of assassination attempts. The trial was unpopular, even among Cromwell supporters. Day one begins. We would like to present before the court the charges that lay against King Charles I. First, he started the war against Parliament. Second, a soldier who changed sides during the war from Charles to Parliament heard the king say that he didn't care how the parliamentarian prisoners were treated. Finally, King Charles I plotted with Scotland and, and his son to raise an army to invade England while he was discussing peace with Parliament. Would you like to respond to these charges, King Charles, on the charges that you are a tyrant, traitor, and murderer, and a public and implacable enemy to the Commonwealth of England? How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? The court has no power to put me on trial. I am the king of England. I cannot be tried by any superior jurisdiction on earth. If power without law can make law, I not know what subject in England can be sure of his life or anything to call his own. Would the soldiers please remove the king from the courtroom? The second and third days follow like the first. King Charles even refused to take his hat off in court, showing his disrespect for the whole process. On the fourth day, he was not brought to court. For three days, witnesses were brought in. Let's listen in on a few. Will the court please note that the accused still refuses to enter a plea? Would the prosecution please bring forth their witness? Would the witness please tell the court whether Charles started the war? Has saw the king raise his standards in 1642. You all know that means for the intent of war. He started the war. Thank you. We would like to call the next witness. Witness, could you explain to the court King Charles' attitude towards prisoners, his fellow Englishmen? The king did not care what happened to his prisoners. I even overheard him say that they, meaning us, were his enemies. The king called his own people his enemies. Thank you, witness. Now, if it pleases the court, we would like to bring our final witness. The court has hold over 30 witnesses. We, wouldn't, we don't want to take any more of your time. Just one final question. Was the king's intent overthrowing Parliament? Yes. The King Charles thought that he only had to answer to God, not the people of England. He had me deliver a secret letter outlining the dissolve of Parliament. Thank you. It is evident that King Charles did not have the best in interest of English at heart. The prosecution now rests. Over 30 witnesses testified. King Charles was not allowed to hear the evidence against him or even question the witnesses. On day seven, the king was brought back into the court. There was a contract and a bargain made between the king and his people. You took an oath and that bond goes both ways. You are to protect the people, not harm them. A monarch must obey the law and protect, not make war on his subjects. You have not been, as you ought to be, a protector of England, rather the destroyer of England. I do stand more for the liberty of my people than any here that come to be my pretended judges. This entire trial is a sham and unlawful. I was not even allowed to hear the witnesses that spoke against me. There is no precedent to put a king on trial. It is too late to speak now. I will issue the sentence. Charles Stuart, as a tyrant, traitor, murderer, and public enemy to the good of this nation, shall be put to death by severing of his head from his body. The king, for the crimes contained in the charge, should be carried back to the place from whence he came, and thence to the place of execution, where his head should be severed from his body. Three days later, the king was executed. The first executioners refused to be the one who killed the king. Finally, one agreed, as long as he wore a mask so no one knew his identity. Before his ex execution, the king said, I have delivered to my conscience. I pray God you do take those courses that are best for the good of the kingdom and your own salvation. As the king was beheaded, a groan of thousands of voices rang out. Comments were made that, had, that never such a sound had been uttered. People then lined up to dip their handkerchiefs in his blood, thought to be good luck.